tell that Archie's being greedy when he eats the little bit. It's the filler. Spot on. Except for the youth. Not really. I mean, it's still. It's not like stupid. It's not like they're like. That's what's interesting. Hello. The thing? Yep. We are live on all channels. Awesome. All right. Let's kill it. All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to episode seven of the Flashback Podcast, hosted by the Harry Tarantula. This week's subjects are where is that sheet? Oh, there we go. So today we're talking about GP Montreal, GP Nyoga, and GP Denver, but we're not going to be doing that much coverage on Denver, considering it's going on literally right now. <laughs> uh, we also intend on talking about the upcoming uh, upcoming HT Challenge Series event schedule and the Legacy and Modern IQs coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. And hey. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Whoa. What's up? What's so, uh, what you just listened to was Spider by Dryum. Uh, it's available through Arius Records. You can get that at Beatport.com. So, hi, guys. Hello. Very excited to be here. Yeah. For Again. Sure. 
for the seventh, sixth time. I say I missed last week. Yeah, he did. Last week. So um, my name is Bo. I'm Richard. And I'm Yuval. And welcome to the Flashback Podcast. Uh, we're brought to you by Harry Tarantula, uh, card game, comics, all of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, all right. We first on the uh, first on the chopping block. Uh, so Yuval, you went to GP Montreal. Yes, that's why I wasn't here last week. Yes. Um, I'm very glad to be back. Um, so GP Montreal, I went to it. I didn't do very well at it. Um, so uh, if I remember correctly, you went 5-0, scrub out, scrub out, scrub out? No, 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 no. That was yesterday. Oh, that was yesterday. At, at the GP, I went 2-0, scrub out, scrub out, and then I got to 5-2. And lost the win and in. Um, however, I'm not going to talk too much about it because I do. Oh we yeah, are making a vlog. Yeah, you um, a vlog. Yeah, I was recording myself the entire time. Uh, it's a little amateurish because you know it was my first time, uh, but hopefully people enjoy it, and I will obviously work on it for future GPs that I go to. Uh, hopefully, I will be going to future GPs. Um, yeah, that's about it. Just, just go watch the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> just go watch the vlog. All right, cool. So, so we might be coming in a bit quiet now, so just waiting for chat to let me know if we are sounding a bit better. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, GP Nyoga. Or Nagoya. Nagoya. Nagoya, yeah. Nagoya, yeah. yeah. So we have the, l the deck lists from that, if I'm correct. Well, we don't have the deck list, but we have what they played. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, thank you, <laughs> producer. It's like... <laughs> how do we sound, chat? How do we uh, how do we sound? We chat, sound good. Chat one two. Hi, chat. Check one two one two. One <laughs> one. <laughs> well, there's this thing called gain. <laughs> and we're good. We're good. Awesome. So, Grand Prix Nagoya was this weekend. Uh, if you don't know where Nagoya is, it is in the southern part of Japan. Uh, there was a team limited GP, which is an interesting format. Then. Which is, <laughs> it's it's interesting an interesting is format. Yeah. Interesting is a word to describe <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it's a scary format. You yeah. you get you know packs and you have to build three distinct decks. Now it's twelve packs if I'm correct, right? Uh, yeah. I believe so. Yeah, twelve yeah, packs as opposed to the normal six per person. You now get four per person. However, you get to share pools. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So which is the big thing. Yeah. yeah in, in a weird, weird way, way, your decks are actually more powerful because, because you have twelve decks to build or twelve packs to build from. Yeah. Right? Uh, so especially in Guild Magic. Mm -hmm. So there was six hundred and sixty-four teams, and four teams uh, made it to the top four. Now here's an interesting stat uh, from the top four: they have a combined eighty Grand Prix top eights. Does it wait? Does this include this one? This does not include this one. Okay, so now now it's ninety two combined no. top eights. Uh, eighty plus. How is that ninety two? Because they each have one, and there's twelve players. Okay. Yes. Okay. Fine. <laughs> All right. Fine. Ninety two. Okay. Right, so there's ninety two Grand Prix top eights, as well as eighteen. Uh, twenty. Uh, 20 sorry. Twenty, 20 yeah. Grand Prix wins. Now. Uh, we're just going to go from like the semifinals all the way down to finals. Um, in fourth spot was um, Matsumoto, uh, UK Matsumoto, Shuhei Nakamura, which we're going to talk about in a moment, uh, Yokoshiro Aikawa, and they played Selesnya, Is It, and then Red, White, Green, because it's not called Naya. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you call it, it Naya? No, they just, we, they just call enough, it. They don't call it Naya. Um, what's been happening a lot with how Wizards is describing the archetypes that are being played? Uh, they they're going from one team is red, white, green. Somebody is Demir with green. They're not. They're not like blue, black, green. Uh, oh yeah, and red, white, green, and they're not Boros green and Demir green. They're just switching it up. Yeah, randomly, it, it, yeah, it's, 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 it's a little it, weird how Wizards is doing this. It is weird. Uh, so they were fourth. Uh, I believe. Sorry, I believe they were fourth. Uh. Now, going to the next semifinalist team was Hi Hitoshi Hiratoshi Yoshiura. Yoshiura, who was playing Golgari. Uh, Naoya Kawanishi. 
which was Demir was a splash of green, and the splash was for Vraska. And that's it. Like, just her? <laughs> just it. That's fair. She's I, yeah. I'd I've splash for Vraska. Yeah. Just I've abrupt like, decay. I've actually been... Um, that mm. ult's pretty solid. Yeah. I mean, I, Vraska's pretty very, hard to beat. I've been very, very uh, impressed by Vraska and Limited. My initial reaction to her uh, was her plus two is not very good in Limited. I'll agree. Yeah, she's um, not she's not a limited all star, but she's a limited four piece well, four piece of removal. But it turns out yeah. four cost actually removal. her plus is really good. So her minus is really good in the early game to get rid of pressure. Oh, one hundred percent. And then in the late game, her plus turns your lands into cards. That is true. That's true. Yeah, right. Because you can't just permanent. start sacking. Yeah, which is the thing it. that I kind which of glossed over at first. That's fair. Uh, so this kind of takes us to uh, the finals match, uh, which was Yue Hakasawa who played Demir. With a splash of green. This uh, is the name I know, Makihito Mahara. Yeah, Mahara played. Makihito Mahara, yeah. Yeah, Mahara played Boros, and <sighs> looking at his deck, <laughs> it was just gross. Did you see the list? I did see the list. Yeah, it was it was pretty gross. Uh, so then we have Noke Shimizu, or Shimizu, 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 who played Golgari. His list was pretty sweet too. Uh, the the weaker of the decks was, I think, uh, Yue's, and it, because it was a, it was a forced splash for green. Oh, okay. There was, there there was, was just like not enough playables. Yeah, I don't think there was. A, there was definitely not enough playables. Uh, okay, that, that's yeah. it's weird to me that they had somebody on Golgari and then somebody forcing a, a green splash because you'd think all the good green cards would be in the Golgari deck. Uh, th- okay. Most of the good green cards were in the Golgari deck, but like it. It looked like an awkward deck to play. It's okay. a definitely deck I would not so, want to play. So, like, what you're saying is uh, basically what happened there is they were kind of relying on Makihito Mahara and uh, Naoki Shimizu to kind of carry the team, and like they were, and obviously it worked in the semifinals and didn't work out in the finals. Yeah. Uh, so the finalists, uh, I want to, I want st- to, I'm not going to say what their names are yet. I just want to see what their team name is and. Uh, so their team name, uh, according to uh, Wizards of the Coast on the event uh, event page, was Japanese Peach Garden Oak. That's a pretty good team. That name. is probably the funnest team name I've ever heard. And uh, I just want to take a moment to do a shout out to everyone in the chat. So saying hi to Trailer Moon and Flip Top Twenty Three. Hey guys. Hello. Hello. How are you guys? So uh, another thing is tonight, uh, if you click subscribe. Uh, oh yeah. You'll be entered in to win one of these sweet Harry Key t-shirts. Awesome. Yeah. Maybe I should open up my Twitch and click subscribe. I'd like one of those t-shirts. Yeah. I've already subscribed. <laughs> yes, there you go. Uh, so we're going to start just – so it was Ken Yukiharu who played Is It with a splash of black, so yeah. Grixis. Yeah. <laughs> and or blue, red, black. Or blue, red, black, but it's Grixis. <laughs> we all know it's Grixis. <laughs> and it was a sweet deck. Mm-hmm. Like, it was sick. Then there was uh, Ray Sa- Sato, who played Selesnya. This was a token machine. Oh, These yeah. guys had a sick pool. Okay. Okay. So, Selesnya Unlimited, if you can go wide, you are probably well, like one of the scariest decks in the format, in my opinion. Oh, for sure. I think, like, you, I think you beat Boros in the. W- in oh, the 100%. Because uh, you're just making yeah. way more dudes. Not to mention their primary token that they generate is a life linker. Yeah. And then the last player was our player C was Kentaro Yamamoto. Now, reading their deck list, it was like it was they had a really good pool, and they right. just kind of like separated all of their things uh, well to work efficiently. Now, that aside, this was their second team Grand Prix win. Wow. Yes. So they, these guys really worked well together. Then. Yeah, this is the second time that they've done that. Uh, each one of these had each sorry each one of the players has uh, was uh, also a Grand Prix winner. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to remember which one won. Uh, uh, just minor correction. Uh, we mean follow, not subscribe. We do not have subscribes yet. Uh, uh, we are not an affiliate. Yes. Oh yes. Get us to an affiliate status. Follow <laughs> us. Follow. And win a sweet T-shirt. Yes, win a sweet shirt. Uh, so, one was GP Hong Kong winner of 2017. Okay. One was uh, GP Tokyo in 2016. Right. And the other one was another dr- uh, Grand Prix within the last couple months. Okay. So, 
but these guys have won two team uh, events as well. So, do you guys know what the 30th club is? The 30th club. If I remember correctly, it's players that have had 30 top eight finishes in the GP. Yes. And there's only two players on that list. Too. Ooh. <laughs> and they, they both made it this year. Yes, they both made it this year. A very <laughs> exclusive club, then. That is a very exclusive club. Club, And the first one is, of course, uh, Martin Yuza, who made it in, well, he, what was it, Las Vegas? Yeah, yeah Grand Prix Las Vegas yeah. a few months ago. And the next one was, of course, Shuhei Nakamura, who, shout out to Shuhei. Uh, I hope you're watching, actually. <laughs> <And> <laughs> that would be great. Uh, he he follows me, so it's fine. Oh, nice. Awesome. <laughs> uh, but uh, hopefully you're watching this. And if not, congratulations on you know being a part of that exclusive club. Uh, that is a fantastic. That, yeah, that is that a huge achievement. Definitely Even is. Just like one GP top eight is like yeah. like a huge deal, right? If you like thirty. Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. So awesome, great job. Yeah. Now, I wonder what the results for. I wonder if we have results from Denver yet. We can check. Uh, I mean, w like, I do want to talk a little bit about. Um, my experiences in terms of archetypes at the GP because I didn't actually get to do that that much at the vlog. I just kind of talked about you know kind of the experience. Um, sure, I'll get I'll give you a couple tips. Like yeah, so <laughs> so basically, um, at the GP, I I was I played Boros during the GP, and mm -hmm. after scrubbing out day one, I did a PDQ on day two, where I again played Boros. Uh, this is how my pools lined up. It wasn't like I was forcing Boros. So did you force Boros the first the first time? No, the first time uh, I I opened Sky Knight Legionnaire, um, a bunch of good three power mentor creatures. Mm -hmm. It just kind of lined up in a way that if I wasn't playing Boros, I was probably gonna be playing some weird kind of slow deck, which okay. I felt like I'd rather be playing a slightly faster deck if it okay. looks like a lot of pools uh, could be made uh, as slow decks. And this was a sealed event, right? This was a sealed event. Okay. Um, this was limited. And I found that four color decks mm -hmm. were king in, in this limited format. Uh, in the the uh, so like just between the gates and the uh, clue yeah, or not with, with the amount lockets. of with the amount of color fixing that there is, mm -hmm. um, you can very easily build a two color deck splashing one or two colors for your bombs in your pool. And a lot of the a lot of these decks were base uh, green black or blue black because. Those are, you know, the, the slower sort of decks in the format, and red and green or blue, depending on which one you splash on your base, uh, gave you access to a lot of good removal and bombs. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of my wins were just because my opponents were playing decks that were trying to be slow and grindy. And so I because was you were able to essentially... I just curved out. Yeah, curved out. That's it. Out. You're able to do things before they're essentially on the board. Exactly. Okay. And, like, I... I had a lot of fun doing it, but I, I would have loved to have a pool that lets me play, you know, the slow, grindy, like, all removal, like, board wipes. It, it, it's just so much fun to me. I, I, I personally really, l I like playing Control a lot. Like, I play Blue Tron and Modern, but, right. like, for Limited, I just You're love a monster. being... I am a monster. This is factually correct. <laughs> um, but in Limited, I personally really like being the active player. I love being able to play things on curve yeah. and just always being able to do everything, something each turn. Yeah, so I, I like... When I was building my decks, I did actually have the option to try to build a slower, grindy mid-range deck. And, mm -hmm. and again, like I said, I, I, I feel like uh, a slightly more aggressive deck is better in limited, mm -hmm. um, especially in this limited, where a lot of creatures are kind of small. Mm -hmm. So trading is not very good when your opponent's on the back foot. Okay. Right. What I've noticed, though, about the creatures, though, in this particular format is there's also, you know, the creatures are small, but they got a lot of big butts. Yeah, there are a lot like of big butts. Like, you can't run your, like, 1-1 one, one tokens and no. do, like, you know, a 2-1-5. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so <laughs> the 1-5 the specifically is, like, a huge issue. There's a 1-5 and a 1-4, and those are the two creatures that gave me the biggest trouble, mm -hmm. um, which is why I was playing a main board called the Culprit, mm -hmm. which is yeah. four mana kill something with toughness four or greater. Yeah. Right? Uh, which really, really helped kind of clear the way a lot to let my smaller three X's get through. Yeah. Um, and then obviously Skylight Legionnaire, which everybody knows Skylight Legionnaire is, is, is a great limited card. Skylight and Legionnaire it, it is not really just my one of my favorite Boros cards. It's probably one of my favorite cards from like all of Ravnica. Yeah. Because it's been printed in every Ravnica block so yep. far. Mm -hmm. And and it's been an amazing 
common in every single one of those sets. Even even in uh, like Modern Masters 2017, mm -hmm. a draft format which is just so high powered, you still could pick Skylight Legionnaire as a high pick and be correct. Mm -hmm. uh, like the Skylight Legionnaire, I found that e I've hate drafted that card. Just because I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> like, if you don't have something that's either in the air that can block it for days, yeah. or you just have, like, straight-up hard removal, that thing's probably going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely and if you can get, like, one three-drop Mentor, and he's yes. a 3-3 three, three now, you're just getting it's bolted It's especially each powerful with Mentor in this set, because there's the 3-mana three 3-3 mana three, three Mentor, mm -hmm. and the 3-mana three 3-1 three Mentor, and they're just perfect on the curve of 3-3 three, three Mentor. Turn four, you play the Scout Legionnaire, attack with both, Mentor Legionnaire, leave up a combat trick, mm -hmm. right? And that was just, uh, I did that a couple of times, and every time I did that, I won that game because it's almost unbeatable. You can't trade with the creatures because I've got my combat trick. It's A lot of the removal is damage-based, so again, my combat trick saves my creatures. Um, and one thing I would like to point out, uh, as you were saying, you were saying earlier, Bo, that you think Selesnya is really good against Boros. There is one common, specifically, mm -hmm. called Cosmotronic Wave. Oh my oh god, yeah. this card. <laughs> that card that is sweet. nuts. <laughs> the, in, in, there's been a lot of cards with this effect that your opponent's creatures can't block. Mm -hmm. yeah. And largely they've been sideboard cards in like like a super aggressive deck. And only if you're playing against a deck that's playing a bunch of fat creatures. I just want to make sure I remember Golgari. the card correctly. It's the one yep. where when you cast it, ping all your enemy creatures and ping? they cannot block. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's four mana. Right. That card has saved me so many times when I've been playing Is it in draft and I'm facing like Selesnya tokens yeah, and, and it, drop it's a Tristani. It's either it's, it's like either like a, a board wipe, yeah, yeah, or a way to just punch through the last eight points of damage, right? Like your opponent, the board is stalled. You have a bunch of creatures. They have a bunch of creatures. Nobody's attacking. You go top deck Cosmotronic wave. Okay, I win. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's it. Like I remember, uh, I remember just playing it and I was like, why? I just tap all my dudes and, or the. Uh, ping all those dudes and I win. Yeah, yeah. It's it's an I win card. It's yeah. one of those great I it's, win cards. And, and it's kind of it's really weird because um, the way this format is sort of set up, it, the way I'm sort of seeing it is there's a lot of board stalls, but there's so many ways to break the board stalls. Yeah, that's true. Right, like a four mana spell that pings all the dudes and, and prevents they can't block. Mm -hmm. That is so strong. It's 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 th there's just so many ways to break through the board stalls. Like, uh, there's also, like, Selective Snare, mm -hmm. which X and a blue bounce X target creatures of the same creature type. And I actually have a funny story about that. I, I was playing in the GP. Or, uh, this was the PTQ. This was the next day. And I have... Um, the PTQ at uh, the GP, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I had a 2-mana two 2-1 two that was a Goblin Rogue. Mm -hmm. And okay. I had a, um, a Human Soldier. And then I played a Giant Warrior. And my opponent was like, how do you have three creatures, each with two distinct creature types, and none of them are lining up for my selective snare? And it was it was just like a really funny thing to, to see happen, and I, and I just specifically remember that well, one. Well, you know, congratulations. Like, you had fun at the PTQ. I did, yeah. All right, speaking of PTQs, we have, like, there's two things that happened, uh, obviously. So uh, Team Harry Tarantula, uh, they have both qualified. Because there's two of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All two. So the entire one, team. The entire team, yes. The entire team. Uh, so one has qualified to go to uh, the Pro Tour in Atlanta, I believe. I believe the next one's in Atlanta, yes, yes. In November, and that's David Root. And Gabe Sang uh, yesterday spiked a PPTQ to get an invite to the RPTQ oh, yesterday. Oh, nice. PPTQ. Pardon? What format was it? The format was sealed. Okay. Uh, Not surprising. And <laughs> so... Uh, Gabe posted his deck like at 1 a.m. yesterday, and I was taking a look at it, and I'm like, "Huh, you had a really w good Boros pool." And then I looked at it again this morning because I wasn't tired, right? And I was like, "Damn, now I know where you spiked okay. it. <laughs> it was a sick build." Uh, Shout you can out to Gabe and David from chat. Yeah, and uh, if you are, uh, if you follow Gabe or David or both on uh, Twitter. Uh, you can check out their their pools basically. Gabe's is sick. Uh, we also retweeted it on our Twitter account oh, nice. as well. So uh, you check can take a look out. at it there for sure. Uh, and more PP more. P this one's a Pro Tour qualifier because it was on Magic Online. Yeah. Okay. So, but before we go to that one, mm -hmm. I want to talk about this deck. 
here. Oh, is it the so one that's like four color stuff? Yeah, it's that four one, color stuff. Is this, this is this is a deck that came in second place. If there was if there was a mana base in standard to support it, this is definitely a good one. Yeah. So I just want to read what the <laughs> mana base is. Uh, so we have four drone catacombs, two field of rune, one forest, four glacial fortress, three hinterland harbor, one island, two isolated chapel, three overgrown tomb, <sighs> one plains, one side battle grove. One swamp and four watery graves. The greediest. <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll say, like, initially when I looked at the list, I was just kind of, like, I was scanning it, and I see Drowned Catacomb. Yeah. And right next to it is Sun Petal Grove. And I'm yeah. like, what? <laughs> what, what is this? Did this, this guy, like, make a mistake when he was typing up his deck list? Like, no, what's going no. on here? This, this, is, <laughs> this is an insane list. This is a control list that I would play. Yeah. And this is a control list I would play, like, back when we had five Oh, my control. God. Shout out to Trailer Moon in the chat for posting Gabe and uh, David's Twitter in the Ooh. chat. Thank you. Thank you. Josh, is that you? Who, Trailer Moon? Yeah. No. Oh, that's Petra. That's Petra. Oh, hey, Petra. Oh, my God. Petra. 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 Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So this guy's list is absolutely crazy. He's running 24 instances of sorceries, like any control deck would. Right. Uh, four assassins trophies, chemistry insight, cleansing illas. That's that's the only, like, uh, I think, hard. That's the only hard board wipe in standard, right? Well, no. Settle the Wreckage is a hard board wipe, too. No, but it's the only unconditional board wipe. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's unconditional, yeah. In, uh, standard. Um, Vraska's contempts, you know. And how does he win? He wins with the fairy and Vraska, Relic Seeker. Yep. 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 So, I mean, this is this is just a very sweet list. So uh, you can check that actually out on... Vraska, uh, Relic Seeker is a monster in standard right now. The amount yeah. of times I've died to just being swarmed by pirates. So, yeah. Absolutely. Like, I yeah. had... I was playing uh, Blue-White Control online, mm -hmm. and as soon as Vraska ah. is down, I could not... Yeah, I even with my card advantage, mm -hmm. I couldn't draw a uh, removal spell to uh, get rid of it, and I was like, I'm so dead. Yeah, I've <laughs> I've been playing Demir stuff is what I call no Demir garbage is what Demir I call garbage. It. Demir garbage. Uh, check out our f our upcoming uh, standard deck tech series. Uh, should be released in the on the uh, during the next few weeks. But I've been playing Demir garbage in standard right now. And, and why is it second? Garbage? Well, <laughs> every deck is garbage. Yeah, because we have an every, unsolved yeah. format. We have an unsolved yeah. standard format, that's why. Um, but anytime a Veraska drops, if I do not immediately Veraska's Contemptor, ironically enough, I just get absolutely swarmed <laughs> with tokens. Yeah, if you don't v make, make Veraska Contempt yourself. You've all just pointed so out. So, yeah, uh, I, I just want to. I was looking over this list again because I didn't really fully look over it earlier. Initially, I thought it was just Esper splashing green for Assassin's Trophy. Mm -hmm. Then I heard Vraska. I'm like, okay, these are still just one green in the, in the mana yeah. cost. Then I look at the sideboard, and there's two Carnage Tyrants. <laughs> yeah, right? What is this deck? It is, like, oh my God. it's greed. It is the best kind of greed, too. <laughs> uh, so, this, uh, who is it? Uh, let's give a shout-out to Matthew McDaniel, who plays in Lenexa, Kansas, and he came in second Baldy place man. at uh, PBTQ at the Collector's Cash. So, shout out to all those guys out there. This is a deck that we definitely like here in Toronto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or at least I do. I, 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 do I will maybe try to build this deck tonight, actually. Yeah? Greedy deck. All right, so this... If there's a format for greedy decks, it's right now. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And greedy deck formats are the funnest. They are so much fun. Uh, so this is in standard. Do you know what this is? That's the the top eight. <laughs> These are the top the eight. Top eight from standard PTQ. Or yeah, PTQ from, from a standard PTQ on MTGO. Yeah. So I'm just gonna read what the archetypes are. Yeah. And it's and surprisingly, actually, they're all different. They there are is, all there's different. No doubling up on decks. And then I'm gonna give you the breakdown of yeah. what this PTQ had in it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to laugh. So uh, at top spot was Golgari Aggro. Then number two was Grixis Midrange. Number three was Esper Control. Number four was Jeskai Control. Yeah. Okay. I actually, I actually have some stuff to say about that that can get you. Uh, Boros Aggro came in fifth. Dragon Deck Wins was sixth. Golgari Explore is seventh. And Is It Spells is number eight. <laughs> <laughs> There's just nothing to say. <laughs> like, what do you say to this? Like, th it is absolutely... Petra, like, you're a mod now. Petra, you're a mod. 
Congratulations. Um, so I want to flip to the dragon deck wins because I think that just is super spicy. We're I will here. say I did read a bit about this PTQ, yeah. but only from an article. I can't remember who wrote it. It was on Channel Fireball about the mana bases. That's all I read about. Oh, that was... Um, I know he, who I can't. Yeah, I he, cannot he, think of he, he was just talking about like mana base theory and whether or not these people had uh, a good mana base that was good enough to like cast all. Well, they, he sh he should have went. He should have gone to Kansas yes. and talked to this guy and talked about this deck because. <laughs> wow. All right, so Dragon Deck wins. Yeah, that's an interesting name. First of all, well, I think it's borrowed from Red Deck wins. Yeah, and it's range. all mid range. I mean, it makes it sense. is yeah. it is a red mid range deck because the first thing you're dropping is Goblin Chain Warlord. Oh, yep, yeah. one of those. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, and that's, oh, no, sorry, there's a runaway theme. So th there is technically a two-drop, but... Is that really a... Th is, do we want to call that I, technically? I, I play it on two, draw on two, but I immediately, Steam like... Steam King? Yeah, I'll play yeah, it on two. you play it on two? Yeah. I was being facetious. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'm like... like you They're never so serious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're millennials. I, I, We're bad at detecting sarcasm. This is... This is <laughs> okay, let's just talk about the deck. All right, let's talk about the deck. All right, so Demanding Dragon, good card. Goblin Chain World, great card. Lathless Dragon Queen. Oh my god, that Six thing. drop. Six drop, pure greed. Ugh. This guy's only running Four this guy's nine. this guy's running 25 lands in a red deck. Let's let's examine that. 25 lands in a red deck. Jesus. <laughs> Like, red classically runs less than 20. Yeah. This one's running a full 25 because it is a mid-range deck. And... Well, it's, it's red-white. It's not, it's not actually, like, fully red. There is a white splash for a single card? Yeah. That's it. He's playing four foundries, four cliff top retreats, and a planes for four justice strikes? Yeah. Okay. That's... Maybe he just really wants to make sure he can cast it on time. I mean, you'd, you you want to yeah. Yeah. So thing. You always like want to cast your splash. What, what right? I what I remember uh, from reading about this deck is, uh, and it's all coming back now. It's the deck plays very few early drops, so it really wants to be using its removal to be stemming the bleeding in the early game. Yeah, uh, and that's why Justice Strike is so important. That's why there's so many white sources because he really wants to be able to cast Justice Strike on two, right? Because you really want to be able to kill that that yeah. first creature. Yeah. Um, at instant speed, too. I think so. The list plays four justice strike, one lava coil, which you might look at the list and say, hey, why is it not like it's the other way three around. and two or yeah. Four, yeah, like four yeah. and one for lava coil? But I think the instant speed is really like a, a very big deal. Well, for sure. Um, I mean, it, this is. <laughs> this was a deck when I was looking at it. I was like, this is pretty sweet, but it, it scares me. Yeah. I, I don't think I'd want to play against this list, uh, nope. mostly because. The list I'm playing right now plays a lot of low drop things, and Goblin Chain Warlord is just a Chain card Warlord that is me. a card that's Let's insane. It has this. been insane. It is insane. It will continue to be insane as long as there are X ones that are powerful in any format. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing it in modern. I play the the really bad Flame of Keld deck. Um, oh, so I won. Uh, I won my last trophy with the Flame of Keld deck. Yeah, it's it's so a deck. I I've been. I believe it was you that told me it's bad. Don't play that deck. It's bad. <laughs> well. Did you did you build the budget version or the full No, version? I built, I built okay. the full version. So <laughs> I, I built the budget version, uh, which is bad. Um, I would imagine. But I, I have been doing three twos. I had one four one with it. Which That's was not bad. But the thing about the deck is I think your matchups have to line up. Yeah. Right. Well, what's the primary difference between the budget version and, and the non-budget version? I'm actually it's not like sure, but I imagine... It's the do you play guides even in the non-budget version? You don't. No, the, no. the, the thing about the deck the is you're actually playing... Uh, you'd rather play Gitu Lava Runner yeah. over Goblin Guide because of the creature type. Okay. Oh, you're dependent on wizards and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, is it the mono red wizards list? It's mono red Flame of Keld, which, yeah. which plays uh, four wizards lightning, four lightning bolt, four fiery temper. Yep. Fiery. I, Flame of Keld makes you discard... Bowman Trader makes you discard. Faithless Wizard makes you I'm discard. I'm not aware of Fiery and Tempers. Fiery Temper is a one colorless double red. It deals three damage to any target. Mm -hmm. And for a madness cost of one, you can, you, you when do, you yeah. discard spicy. it, you spice it. So yeah. it's your 12th, like, it's your... It's your 12th. It's 12th. It's 12th. Yeah, 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 it's 12th. Bolt. Nine to 12th. Nice. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that I've heard people saying about the deck is they're not sure why um, we're not just playing for... Lava Spike, for Lightning Bolt, and for um, e and interestingly enough, I think 
Rift Bolt actually works better in the deck because when your Flame of Oh no, sorry, it's on the upkeep. It is yeah, on it's the on the upkeep. upkeep. Yikes. Yep. That's unfortunate. Yep. Annoying. But <laughs> then I, I, I still I I've run into a lot of issues where I've drawn a fiery temper or a uh, wizard's lightning with two mana and an opponent at two life. And I lose the next turn. Yep. And that's I magic. Hate that. I hate it so much. So I'm I'm tempted to, to try to switch out those bolts, but we're not talking about So that. have you played against Thousand Year Storm yet? That is nope. a hilarious combo what format? deck, and I'm what format? so happy. So this is in standard. Okay, I and so I was so very much. uh I was playing uh on Arena. Right. And I haven't f- I haven't faced off against it on uh Moto yet, but I played against it on Arena and it was Again, I'm playing. Bl- I'm playing blue light control. Right. And I'm sending. I'm. I shipped. Uh, t- I played to fairy. Shipped the relic third from the bottom. Uh, you know, draw some cards. My opponent played thousand year storm. I sent it back to his library. Placed some more cards. Sent a relic back to the library again. Uh, at this point, I had to you know replay another to fairy which right. I had drawn, and just I kept going like this. And the game, like normally games end in about like ten minutes. I started this game at 3 a.m. in the morning, right. and I finished at 4.15. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, it was a grindy match, that's, and I lost. That's, that's one issue. And I lost really badly. Uh, <laughs> it was – so in his uh, – he had played, uh, I believe it's Mission Briefing, where you gain three life and draw a card. Yep. So – he played that a bunch of times against me, and I was like, "All right, whatever. I'm gonna kill you with Teferi anyways." That's Wait, mission brief? No, mission briefing is the surveil too. Yeah, mission snap briefing back. Is surveil to snap. Oh, that's right. Mission. Uh, that is. You're thinking of revitalized. That's the game card. Yeah. Does he play that? He. Well, this dude did. This isn't on this list. Okay, there we go. but yeah. So he played this, um, and I was like, "Okay, cool, whatever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, k- I'm, I'm still gonna kill you to with Teferi." Yeah. And I didn't uh, because I was. Every time he played a thousand year storm, if the second he did, I was instantly dead because he had like, you know lightning strike me yeah. several mm-hmm. times. So as soon as that, you know, he's just like bam, I'm gonna op, play op, lightning op strike. Strike, you're dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. And it was, I was like, w- I've what? had interactive <laughs> combos like non interactive combos before. Like dredge is a thing. KCI, Co- KCI is a thing. Mind saver lock. You you be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, here with your fringe decks. It's not a fringe deck. It's just a. S- it's just an annoying deck. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, Tron is Tron, no matter how you cut it. Oh God. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, mono blue Tron. <laughs> so this it it's was giving aneurysms to people. The thousand right. year That's storm. The, uh, the thousand year storm uh, deck is, I would say pretty legit i i think that's one of the coolest decks in standard right now i'm yeah. so glad that people can play storm i always standard like right storm now. variants it's they're so they're much fun. funny to me yeah. yes but storm and modern is awful uh, it's actually not awful it's just not good <laughs> <laughs> i like, like storm and modern so shout out to the <laughs> storm players out there it's i think it's just like shout out to richard wadarma <laughs> I think I think it's just like horribly overshadowed by KCI by better decks. Yeah, oh. like if if, you're, if you want to play uninteractive combo, why not just play KCI, right? I think Storm is more of a budget friendly deck that you can uh, do. Like you know, what is used what to be? It, it used yeah. to be budget friendly, but now it, now that deck's also 350, 400 dollars, which you know it's for, for, for modern, modern that's really budget, good. For a lot of people who are trying to build a budget modern deck, four hundred dollars is like. Not very cheap. Oh, wait, what's KCI cost these days? Like twenty five dollars? KCI the, the card itself is forty bucks. Forty. Okay. Yeah, yeah. forty. Right. So playset is one like KCI. I bought deck? my playset for fifty cents a piece. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I got I got mine for four dollars each and I sold them at fifteen. <laughs> like, there you go. like yeah. Should have waited. Like, <laughs> and and here's the worst part I think about Storm as a uh, a budget deck. Mm-hmm. It is one of the hardest decks in modern to parrot. And you don't think it is. You're just like, oh, you're one turn, I'll just cast all my spells and win, right? It's not at all. You have to like know your that. deck. You have to you also have to understand your lines of play very well. You you have to not only know your deck inside out, but the first three turns of cantripping so critical. and knowing like what to do with your creatures even is enormous. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh th- I can't even go into depth. I, I let's just say I built the deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some time ago. For like a hundred bucks. I was like, hey, I can now build modern, whatever. Built it and every single game that I played, I lost. And I was like, 
Well, obviously, it's because of bad draws. And, like, now I'm slowly realizing no. it's not bad draws. The deck is just so, so hard to pilot. And you and the, the hardest thing about it is you always think you're doing something right because there's so many cards that do nothing, right? And, like, like a ritual, sure, casting rituals is easy, but it's the non-ritual cards that are so, so difficult to cast and know when to cast and all that. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing. There's decks out there that are, that are you know, beginner friendly, intermediate, and then there's you know the decks that the, have the to know hard, hard, decks. hard mode decks and, for sure. And I think uh, KCI and Storm are definitely hard mode. Um, I would say even like you know uh, the deck you played this past weekend is a hard mode deck if you don't know how to yeah interact with it. So yeah, I was playing Hardened Skills Affinity, which like it's. It's not a hard mode deck in that you have to know your deck inside out. It's a hard mode deck in that if you're not on top of every single card on the board at every single given second, yeah. you are not playing the deck correctly. Mm -hmm. And you and and math gets very difficult when everything is X plus one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like and, and you have to do it all in your head. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's that's like the hard part of hard and skills. But with like Storm and KCI, it's it's so much harder because you have to know a when to try to go off. You have to know, like, what cards you're looking for, what cards are good, what cards are bad. And with Storm specifically, Gifts Ungiven is just one of the hardest cards to play with. So it kind of sounds like to me that uh, Wizards just need to unban Splinter Twin and let everyone yes. have fun again. <laughs> yes. 100% unban Twin, please. Ooh. I will play it. I will uh, play modern. Yeah. I'll build my own modern deck. It's a Toronto Magic podcast, so we will be talking about out the Splinter Twin. Modern, unbanning. yeah. Well, we'll be talking about modern, because that's just what Toronto is, right? Yep. Yep. Uh... So, oh, we're about halfway through the show, so do we want to maybe switch gears to the HTCS? Yeah. All right. So this weekend, <coughs> again, so you're, ev the viewers at home are experiencing <laughs> my superpowers. <laughs> I literally <laughs> stick to everything. He's glue man. <laughs> I am glue. Uh, so the HTCS, we didn't have one uh, this past weekend. No, we did not. Uh, there was an open at a hotel out in Monte the Casino. Monte Casino, yeah. Up, uh, um, if I recall correctly, Edgar uh, Miguelis, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, and I apologize, Edgar, uh, he took it down. Did he? What was he playing? Uh, Amulet Titan? Yeah. So, yeah. so in... Uh, I was no, 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 no. Okay. I'm just listen. Listen. <laughs> just listen. Okay. So he, he won it. Right. And, that, and that's cool and everything. And But we got some upcoming events. Yes, we do. And congratulations to Edgar. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> uh, so this this coming weekend, we have our legacy event. Very excited. Now, Finally I do not recall legacy. if this is – this is our last uh, Eternal Weekend trial. I believe so. No, I, think there's, it, I think there's one more no, in November. No, there is not one more. Are you this sure? Is, this is I'm the sure last one. I know we Eternal have another weekend. legacy. We do have another legacy, but yeah. Eternal Weekend itself is in November. Ah, yeah, the um, weekend's very soon. So this is the last chance. If you don't have your buys, uh, come on down. you know, come on down, uh, fight it out. You'll have to fight me for them, though. Are you going to Eternal Weekend? Uh, no. I'm actually thinking about it. Are you? Yeah. Okay. I Initially, my answer would have been 100% no, like two or three weeks ago, but now I'm, I'm debating. You're it. considering it? Okay, yeah. that's awesome. Well, if you do end up playing and uh honestly like the if event. I, i'm i'm gonna play the legacy event regardless if i do end up winning it there's like a, a 99 percent chance i'll probably just end up going with you again yes um but yeah come on down and try to beat me and probably a bunch of other players trying to <laughs> fight it out for the last uh ew buy before the uh the event itself that's the last eternal weekend of the year right uh yes yeah. okay to be so fair the year's nearly over right? that's right <laughs> so um that's definitely something to look forward to. Yeah. Uh, I look forward to Eternal Weekend. It's uh, always us. Yeah. And the next weekend, we also have the Modern IQ Plus coming up. Yeah. Yeah. So the Modern IQ Plus, we are in season, we are deep into season two of yeah. the Modern I uh, yeah. the IQ season for uh, Star City Games. Uh, so we have an event on the 20th. Shout out to Star City. Shout out to Star City. Uh, on the 27th, we have our challenge series event for it mm -hmm. and then in november and this was a recent uh i was talking to of course our head tournament organizer here at the store and 
November 24th and December 1st are back-to-back -back modern IQs. So that's going to be really interesting for us because normally we hold a modern IQ. And then you we usually do like a different event afterwards. Yeah, but this is the first time we're doing back-to-back um, back back events. So the second event's probably going to be very interesting because people are going to be like, okay, what have people brought this week? Well, the, the, yeah, exactly. Like you could theoretically like metagame one week into the next. Which is which is an owl which is owl is a very interesting aspect of the game that I think is underappreciated. But checking out the room and seeing okay, what's what are people probably going to be playing today? Yeah, I mean, like that's a thing. I I know myself. I don't personally do it. I like being surprised. Fair. Uh, but I mean, that's. I I think it's just really <laughs> difficult to meta game for a lot of things, just because like, unless you're playing in a single store for a long, long time, and you know mm -hmm. everybody there, and you're going to smaller tournaments, mm -hmm. there's always going to be people coming from out of town that have decks you don't know against. That's and what true. if you get paired up against only those people, and your sideboard is tuned to your metagame, but these people are coming in with completely new decks, and you just get run over? Then you just sat at a kitchen table magic for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I mean, like let's say your meta is heavily Storm and KCI based. And your your like your whole sideboard is like surgicals, rest in peace, yeah. stonies, damping sphere, all this. And then your opponent sits down and they're playing jund, and you're like, oh, okay, my whole sideboard is pretty much useless. Like you maybe I can bring in the rest in peace. You make a fair maybe. point. Overtuning is definitely an issue. Yeah. I can I can agree with you there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I definitely you're agree that uh, overtuning is a thing. Yeah. Uh, when <coughs> you when you've experienced a lot of games of Magic in that whether you've been playing your first year or even your 26th year, right. uh, there's a wider variety of stuff you can learn. Uh, for myself, I don't like walking around a room and metagaming. Sure. I mean, I just – that's just me. That's it's, it's a personal thing, and it really has nothing to do with me. I just want to get my mind focused on the deck that I am playing. Yeah, you want to go yeah. in blind. And you don't want to have, like – other sources of information to work about. Work well, no, about. I, I want other sources of information, but I'm not going to walk around a room and be like, oh, what are you playing? Oh, what fair, playing? fair, fair. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be like a crane. No, I, I sort of like mean like in the broad sense of like you poke your head and see who's there. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if, if, I mean if during that's what I mean by checking out the room. Like, okay, that's, don't that's go up fair. to people and like checking out the deck list. Hey, like, what oh, are you like, playing? I see like, oh, there's a Storm guy. There's the KCI guy. Yeah. There's the 12 other KCI guys. More like oh, look, there's all KCI. Yeah. Thirty percent of the room KCI. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, think I think the worst thing about KCI, KCI for me right now is that because I'm I'm largely playing hardened scales affinity, I can't even put in like a rest in peace in my board. I I, I have only one axis to fight them on, and that is damping sphere. Yeah. And then they go E E on two, blow it up, and then I say, okay, cool. I uh, love this game. <laughs> <laughs> Variance is so much fun. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> Speaking of dampening sphere, uh, did you s by any chance? I, uh, I think I was talking to you with it uh, about it. Was Sam Hardy was playing <laughs> Hardened Scales <laughs> on uh, yeah. on his stream, and it was it was entertaining to watch, uh, especially against the KCI player where he should have played his dampening sphere on turn two, and instead never he, wait. With he the, the he KCI never opponent. he waited. And then his opponent played Scrap Trawler, and he's like, yeah, I lose. Yeah. Well, yes, you did lose. Yeah. And that's fine, but well, you really should have played your sideboard card when you were when Why you did he hold up the mana? Did he just uh, hold up counter No, I think he just played no, something else. He just played, he just, he just yeah. played something else. Yeah. Okay, okay. And like, it was, you know, it's fine. But realistically, if you're playing against a deck, you should play your sideboard cards as soon as possible unless they haven't played mm -hmm. that thing. Mm -hmm. Like, and but especially against KCI, oh damping yeah. sphere goes down. Yeah, the, the, you don't want to wait for you don't want to wait for now, uh, that. Now, weirdly enough, if you have one damping sphere, you actually wait with the second one mm. in case they remove the first one. Yeah, right. Uh, and the the best way to they remove your first one is with an EE on two, and that'll remove every single sphere that you have. So yeah. that's why you wait. Um, one interesting thing, I faced a KCI deck with my heart and skills, and. I got a damp. I my opening hand, and it was really weird. Was three damping spheres, and I'm like, this is too many damping spheres. Half my hand is dead basically once I play the first sphere. But whatever, I'll keep it because I don't want to mulligan and risk not having a damping sphere, right? Yeah. So I I play it on curve, and my opponent goes, like he looks at it, and he's not scared of it, and instantly I know something's wrong, and he goes untap Thopter Foundry. 
and so like and I read the card and like I know what it does. You I don't know, know the combo. It, like I know what it does with Thor yeah. and the Meek, right? I'm just like making sure that I'm reading the card right. Like I see the art. I see I'm like okay, you're playing this in KCI. And then he goes sword of the Meek, and I'm like okay, so you have like three or four mana a turn. That is pretty scary. Like four one ones a turn is is scary. But and I and you're I also can. you're also gaining life too. Yeah. Right? But I can outpace this, and I do have uh, Ink Moth Nexus, so I can technically beat you with Infect. And then he goes, untap, KCI, infinite one with infinite life. And I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> that This deck can do that, too. So, like, be careful, people playing against KCI. They can now beat you with Thopter Sword, <laughs> which that's I like the hard <laughs> way this weekend. <laughs> that's actu- That actually sounds pretty yeah. amazing. And, like, it's... I, I've never seen it in the sideboard of, of any KCI deck ever. I don't and think I have either. Yeah. And and I yeah. actually I talked to the guy and it's main board. Really? He main has board. Thopter, Sword, KCI, main board, and that's actually how he wins. That's he, hilarious. Like KCI can draw its whole deck, right? He still has the Pyrite Spellbomb win. Mm-hmm. But he So he just has a secondary win. Once once KCI can draw its whole deck. He, you know, he has the Foundry and the yeah. Sword in hand, and he has infinite color of any mana that he wants because of Mox Opal, so infinite one wins infinite life. Sounds good. And yeah. I was like, okay. And the cool thing about that is, once you have that combo up, your Pyrite Spellbomb is turned on because every time you sacrifice the sword, your Scrap Crawlers bring back the Spellbomb. So, so you want to hear some interesting news? Sure. All right. So, uh... On holiday, m- on holiday weekends, mm-hmm. we're going to be doing double cube challenge series events. Okay. Cube? Double cube. Oh, double cube. Yeah. So let's say, for example, uh, w- that on the Monday of December... Uh, the next, the next, the next holiday, the next Monday, holiday is Monday is Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So obviously we're not doing anything on Christmas. Right. <laughs> we're closed. <laughs> uh, and, but that weekend, I mean, well, not this weekend. I think we're watching it in 2019. Right. Yeah. Um, on the holiday Mondays during the season, we'll be, the having, the we'll be having a challenge series. series, so you can double up. Awesome. So there'll be one on Saturday and then one on the Monday too. Yeah. That's awesome. Are we still doing uh, draft to draw? Uh, that is in the yet to be determined phase. Okay. okay. Fair um, enough. but we definitely are going to be changing our holiday Mondays up for sure. So, I think we've covered almost everything today. Yeah, we've I covered. Think well, we want to talk. The about only the thing we haven't talked brew. about is the oh, leaderboards st- going into the final challenge. Oh yes, the leaderboards. So Evan, 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 your Shout nemesis, Evan. your nemesis right now, isn't he? So Yuval, Yuval is in second place right now. I was first. I was points leader for a long time. You were points leader for a you long time. You know what? You know why I'm not know. points leader? Because I went to GP Montreal. Yeah. And there was eight people for the sealed. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so Evan is in first place. You're in second. Yeah. Uh, we are on week. We're going into week ten, mm-hmm. and so that means that there are seven or eight events left yeah. in the season and then it's the final challenge yeah uh, which is a 2k event and we are going to have you know a lot of fun doing this yeah like i've uh, actually missed the last few final challenges which makes me really sad yes you did yeah, i believe you were on holiday the last one yeah, yeah. one of them was on holiday and the other one i was uh I think not in country again. So the formats for the fal- final challenge are going to be Guilds of Ravnica draft and then competitive modern, right? Yes, correct. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so very exciting. Uh, we're still again we're we're not even ha- we're halfway through uh, the season, yeah. mm-hmm. and you know just a bit more than halfway. There's through, yeah. yeah the the race is the race is going to get hotter, yeah, and you know it's just yeah. going to go from there. So and our weekend is our weekends are just going to get better as we go along. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say this on October 27th. We are going to be very busy. What's the 27th? Is that the... So that's, the a, that's the modern IQ, okay. but it's also our grand opening. That's right. Yes. So exciting. we moved to a brand new location at the beginning of June. And we have amalgamated the other stores into one large store. It's taken a while to get everything, you know, sorted out in that, but... At the end of this month, we are going to have a three-day grand opening extravaganza. 
Yeah, it's, gonna it's awesome. gonna be ten percent uh, or more off everything off everything in the store. Uh, we also we're also gonna have a haunted house in the basement. That's gonna be super fun. Yeah, actually, just the haunted house is just it's actually like just, just over, over there. there. And <laughs> turn the camera, you yeah. guys can see it being. Built. Unfortunately, there's this, there's this big curtain in the way that you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, so that's gonna happen. We're gonna have costume contests for both adults and children. Yeah, prizes, giveaways, food. We are just basically celebrating, and yeah, we're celebrating we're the fact that we're here. New yeah. store, it's gonna be awesome. Halloween, yeah. like I'm sure a lot of people on staff love Halloween. Oh yeah, I think it's almost like my favorite holiday I think for sure. Everyone, it's, a great holiday. it's the yeah. best holiday. It's definitely fun. Sure, best. It's pretty great. It's top tier. Top, top tier. Top tier. Top, top tier holiday. Tier, tier one. Like S tier. S definitely an S tier tol- uh, hol- holiday. Okay. <laughs> Along with with what like Christmas. Christmas and, is uh, pretty S tier, and like Canadian Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay. I, I I can agree with those. Yeah. All other <laughs> all other this other is a good <laughs> ranking system. <laughs> <laughs> all our other holidays, you know, sure. Sure. Civic sure. Day. Like a, Civic B. Day. Is <laughs> <like> <laughs> family That's Day. The most arbitrary <laughs> holiday. It's Civic Holiday. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well then of course we have <laughs> uh, the one. May two four weekend, which is you know, just great. <laughs> 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 just go out to the <laughs> cottage and have tons of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Back on topic, uh, challenge series. Yeah, so the... So, yeah, we have a modern IQ on the... Yeah, we have double uh, modern IQs that uh, week. Okay. So what's the... Wh- there's two weeks before, though. What do we have? So two weeks before this week, or...? No, no, no. So oh, you mean... Um, in November. You're literally on it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what do you mean, like... So, what is the week before the 24th? Oh, before the 24th. 17th. Yeah, 17th. So what do we got that weekend? So, that weekend, on the Saturday, we have the HTCS uh, Legacy Trial for the Eternal Weekend. Oh, so you were right. So I was right. Is, so there is I told one. you. Okay. There, there is. I, I've been looking uh, over them. We okay. also have the Pokemon it. Lost Thunder pre-release. Uh, check that out. That uh, that's yeah, looks that's insane. That's I'm the, the only the person who cares right. about uh, Lost Thunder at the table right now. You're also yeah. the only player who plays Yu-Gi-Oh too. I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh. I just watch the show because it's ridiculous, <laughs> and I love look. I like uh, watching the crazy stuff that happens. Joey Wheeler is the best character. Ever. Whoa, that's <laughs> back. That's not Kai, but that's not the man who loves dragons so much. He made a jet in the shape of a dragon. Yeah, but I mean, like, who cares? Brooklyn <laughs> Rage. <laughs> Oh. I'm completely lost here. Just that's that's so fine. That's fine. Aware. Yeah. yeah, that means you're quiet <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we have the Legacy Eternal Weekend trial this weekend on the October 20th. We have yep. the Modern IQ next weekend on the 27th. That also coincides with our grand opening. Yeah, and there's standard and after that. On the last weekend of there's standard, uh, don't we? Yeah, standard. Yeah, it's, yeah, standard. it's not last, last weekend. weekend. It's like oh yeah, yeah, first yeah that's weekend first weekend of November. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we have, have the standard, standard. Uh, event. I'm actually I'm actually looking forward to the standard event a lot. I yeah, really want to see. I kind of want to see what what people here are uh, building in the store meta. So if I could play in the event rather than run them, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, if I you really want, I could play your deck. Show you show you how it is. Yeah, it's fair. I mean, I mean, I, I like I I don't have a standard deck. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if I want to build one. Actually, well, I'm I'm, I'm definitely going to be building one. I am super. I built forward. Grixis control on paper. If, so. if you have the deck built and you don't mind me using it, I'll, I'll definitely would pilot it. There you standard go. Event. <laughs> so you'll, you'll see, see. You'll see, see how, how, how it goes. goes. So how's chat going? Chat, how how's chat going? I think it's just Petra. Hi, Petra. It's okay. Hello. So I think that's everything for this week. Yeah. And we were super on schedule today. We were on schedule, but we were ha- we had a very hectic day getting everything ready. We did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so like uh, it was the d- first ever live recording. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah, we did a awesome. live and nothing caught fire. I'm actually super excited about that. Yes, yeah. as am I. I am super excited that nothing caught on fire. So, uh, thanks again for coming out this week, guys. Yeah. Thanks everybody and for checking uh, us out. Oh, hey, Alex. Sorry. Alex is in chat as well. Alex is in chat as well. Uh, so closing banter and plugging the new podcast. Oh, yeah. We have a new podcast launching next week. Uh, yes. That's one thing we will be saying right now. So the flashback is going from weekly to biweekly starting this week. Mm-hmm. And next week is the first episode of our new podcast. Have we decided on a name yet? No. So <laughs> we're, we're going we're gonna to let the viewers uh, decide this. And you can, you know... 
uh, tweet at us, Facebook message us, or anything like that. Do you want Too Hot for Tabletop or Caught in the Web? Okay, so Too Hot for Tabletop was Richard's idea for the podcast name. I, I personally do like it. But Caught in the Web was Mina Ball's idea for a new show that unfortunately we weren't able to get rolling right away. But I kind of want to recycle the name for the podcast. Yeah, that, that makes so sense. In that, so let's, let's tell people what the podcast is. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> Caught in the Web, aka Too Hot for Tabletop, is are going to be our more generic, like general nerd and comic book store podcast. Well, the flashback is obviously way more magic orientated. Mm. So it's going to be myself, Richard, and our lovely mod in chat, Petra. Say hi, Petra. Hi, Petra. And we're just going to be talking about, you know, general, like, comic book stuff, the industry itself, all sorts of fun things. So be sure to check that out next week. And we're going to um, we're gonna rage against, you know, Marvel fans who are petitioning Netflix to bring back Iron Fist Season 3. There's no reason why. There's, there's no reason at all. Iron Fist should stay gone. Yes, it's a shame because his comics, like back in the day, weren't bad. Yeah, no, no because Iron he Fist was awesome. he, Iron Fist and Luke Cage comics were amazing because <laughs> they're paired together. They're not some, you know, it's not some overprivileged white guy <laughs> who's like a poor excuse of a Batman to or a Batman yep. and an Iron Man to be like, hi, he's more of like a dumbed down version of. The Green Arrow <laughs> meets Don Knotts. If you guys don't know who Don Knotts, I do Knotts not know who Don Knotts. So is. Don Knotts is a like comedian from like a long time ago, <laughs> and he just had a like, he was just one of those very silly comedians, very shtickish. Okay. So that's so like a similar stage presence to like Jim Carrey or somebody. Yeah, okay. Jim Jim Carrey would definitely pay homage to someone like Don Knotts. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, Damn millennials. <laughs> 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 so again, uh, like that's what Iron Fist. Iron Fist is just so bad. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> like, I I'll agree with you there. <laughs> like I'm, I'm a huge Netflix Marvel fanboy. Oh, I, uh, I Petra says that she would describe the Iron Fist as irritate, irritating Green Arrow. Yeah, yeah, that's that a good sense. way to put it. And you know, Oliver, Oliver McQueen. You know, he's God. That show was not good either. That show had two good seasons, and then it just. So, A, you're wrong about that. <laughs> Arrow just bites the big one really badly. <laughs> nope. No, nope. You're losing this ba- <laughs> match. His offshoot shows? Yeah, for sure. You know, you have Flash. You have... Season one and two of the Arrow is good. I'm just going to say this season, bluntly. Season one. You are wrong. At least. You are wrong. Um, Petra says zero good seasons. I disagree with both of you. <laughs> but we're Just both right. I'm putting it out here. Season one of Green Arrow was okay. Season two was starting the downhill spiral. And season three was unadulterated garbage. And it, and it stayed that way for the rest of the season. So what is your justification <laughs> for uh, Arrow season one? Okay. The entirety of the chat uh, is against you. The entirety of one person. There's two people in <laughs> chat. And, like, I was 14. Viewers. I was 14, and it looked cool, and that's all I'm going off of. I haven't watched it since I was 14. Well, you can't you're wrong. Argue with that. You can't argue you're, with that. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right? So uh, the, only, the only decent character in the first like season Godhead. is Slade. That's it. Yeah, Slade, well, yeah. Th- that's it. If they he, had the entire series about the whole show, yes, he carried the entire saying, season. He carried season one. That's why season one was good. Him. So that's not why season one is good. <laughs> okay, that's why season one sucked. It's you know you have one person, one character running the show. That's awful. That is horrible writing. That is lazy writing. I think. Nope. Green Arrow nope. is okay. Ch- Fine. <laughs> Six out of ten. Five Petra's, out of seven. Petra's also just going off, uh, off the <laughs> chat. Her latest one was just a disappointed emoji. Well, congratulations, you've disappointed Petra. Okay, that's, that's like that happens I every day. Daily, so. That's fair. Your number's going to thirty nine now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Ooh. we're not going to discuss what the number is because that's just um. weird. <laughs> uh, but you're wrong. Okay. Okay. You watch wa- no, watch Legends of Tomorrow. Okay. 
I, I watched, watched two, two episodes, episodes and I think it was garbage. Whoa. So next week, me and Bo are going to be talking about other stuff. <laughs> 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 and y- Yuval is going to be my Ottoman. <laughs> Who's still going to be talking about how good season nope. one of Green Arrow nope. is. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Just saying. All right, guys. So that's a wrap <laughs> for today. Uh, uh. Thanks for tuning into the Flashback Podcast, Episode 7. Check us out with Episode 1 of Caught in the Too Hot for Tabletop next Web. Saturday. S- yeah, next we know, Sunday. We don't, we don't know what the title is yet. No, yeah. yeah, we're still working you on guys the gotta tell You us. guys got to tell us. Do you want Too Hot for the Tabletop or, or Caught in the, the web? web? Come on. Harry Come on. Tarantula, Caught in the Web, spider-based puns, everybody. I, I do have to agree with Bo here on this one. Although I also do kind of want to keep the name reserved for, for the idea we had. Oh, for resurrecting the new show? Yeah. Oh, that's okay. amazing. <laughs> awesome. All right. All right thanks so everybody. we'll uh, thank, thank everyone for watching, and we'll see you in two weeks. Have a good night. Good night. Oh, Petra says she thinks Caught on the Web makes more sense if it's a general podcast. Nice. Thank you, Petra. Finally, something we agree on. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.